welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily photo show on YouTube every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. If you're not watching live, you could be and you should be because it's so much fun. As everybody in here who is watching live right now knows. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bart. Good morning, Sheila. Bart's just telling us about how they just did a his first YouTube live show. He says he talked about how he got started with filmmaking and YouTube and did about 45 minutes of Q&A on the Aperture. That's Aperture, A-P-U-T-U-R-E, Aperture uh, Facebook page. So go check that out. Bart, that's awesome. I will I will watch it at some point in all my free time. I will try. I really will. Um, good morning, everybody. So today, oh, right. If you're watching live and you're chatting, make sure you type the at photo Joseph thing. Then I can see your chat. You know the routine. Let's just get into it. So today's thing is about travel photography. A, uh, a, a, a viewer posted a comment yesterday about, or the day before or something, about whether they were ready for their travel trip and listed the gear that they're bringing. It's kind of cute. Let's just bring this up, shall we? Mr. Imad Shahana, sorry, I'm, I'm just assuming that, it, yes, that's a Mr. Mr. Imad Shahana says, I'm traveling to India for a month. <laughs> I have an OMD EM5 Mark II and an EM1, 12 to 40 F2.8 and a 40 to 50, 40 to 150 F2.8 and a 75 1.8 and a Rokinon 7.5 millimeter and a 70 to 300 and an Olympus Flash 600 and a Sony RX1. Am I ready? <laughs> Like, dude, you, you could feed an army of photographers with that gear. Yeah, you are also ready to possibly be carrying around too much gear. So this is, when I saw this, I thought this is a really good topic. Yes, clearly Imad's got tons of gear. Now, one thing Imad didn't mention, let's talk about this. Batteries, have lots of batteries. Make sure you have lots of batteries. I have no idea what the battery performance is like on the Olympus cameras. If, you know, one or two batteries is enough for the day or for your style of shooting, or if you need 10 of them. I don't know. I know Sony's have a reputation for needing about a dozen batteries just for a short shoot. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but uh, he's got, he needs batteries. And then of course you need your memory cards. This is my little stupid case, but you need memory cards, lots of them. One of the things you don't, well, let's start with that. Let's, one of the things you don't want to do on the road is clear out a memory card. Let's say that you're traveling with a laptop. So you have a, you're offloading your pictures or you've got some kind of hard drive device, extra, whatever. You've got a way to offload your pictures. That's great. But then you go, okay, well, I offloaded and let me wipe out my memory card. You don't do that. Don't do that. When you're traveling, I would really recommend not doing that. Unless you have multiple backups on the road and or cloud backup, I would really not do that. Because what if your hard drive crashes before you get home or you lose or your laptop gets stolen or your hard drive gets stolen, whatever, and you lose all your pictures? Keep your photos on your memory cards keep them in your camera bag or maybe they get put in the safe in the, the hotel or whatever, but protect them, keep them separate. Don't erase them until you're back home and everything's backed up and you know you're solid and good. It's just too easy to lose pictures and memory cards are cheap, really cheap, especially if you don't have to buy the super high performance ones for you know 4K video and all that. If you're buying cheaper, I mean, they're cheap. So don't, don't, don't do that. Uh, don't erase your cards. So that's, that's like travel tip number one. Should put like numbers, ding. Travel tip number one, don't erase your memory cards. Just buy more because they're cheap. And that will, uh, that will really resolve any kind of, oh my gosh, I lost my, my hard drive crash. I've got my drive stolen, whatever. Keep things separate. Keep them in multiple locations. Remember, a file doesn't exist until it exists in three places. Your primary, your backup, and a remote backup. That's the general rule. When you're traveling, it's really hard to have all three of those. Okay? Especially if you don't have great internet connection, you don't have your remote backup. So you've got to protect what you have at all costs, all right? Cool. Um, batteries, you gotta have enough batteries, right? You gotta have enough batteries to get through a day at minimum. You don't wanna go back to the hotel and have to recharge your batteries in the middle of the day. You don't want to run out of battery and have no way to shoot. That would suck. And it's not like you can just go buy a bunch of double A's. Very, very few cameras will allow you to take uh, double A's and pop them in there or triple A's and pop them in there instead of their native battery. I had an old, still have it actually, an old Rico point and shoot that did that. I thought that was one of the greatest features about it. You took out its native rechargeable battery and it had this little door that popped up and it was like a, you know, like this shaped and you could drop in two triple A's. Super cool in a pinch. Most cameras don't do that though. So travel with enough batteries. And the batteries also means you gotta have your charger. Now the thing about chargers, you don't have to carry it with you, right? You don't have to carry this around when you're out shooting. So if you, if you have one charger and you've got three batteries, just keep in mind that means at some point you're gonna have to get up and might be in the middle of the night and swap out batteries, probably not ideal. So maybe it's worth traveling with multiple chargers. I've 
done things. I think I posted something on Instagram. Last time I was in New York, I was getting ready for a, a day of shooting, and I had like seven chargers plugged into the wall, AA battery chargers and multiple, like everything. Just, it's just kind of ridiculous. Uh, you're, you can have a bag this size just of chargers if you're on a big shoot, but, uh, but you know, it's what you need, right? You got to make sure that you got stuff. Soli is saying, check out the GNAR box. It's awesome for travel. The GNAR box, G-N-A-R-B-O-X. I have reached out to them. They have uh, responded that they are interested in sending a unit for me to do a review and look at. I am super excited about it. It looks really, really cool. And the NAR box is basically, it's more than just a box to store your photos. It, uh, it has its own computing pro computer processing power in it. You can apparently import video into it, connect over your iPhone, and then edit video using the phone as an interface, but the NAR box as the actual computing power. It's kind of cool. I can't wait to try it. Very, very cool. Um, so yeah, batteries, batteries, super, super important. Bart Johnson Productions is saying, I'm a notorious overpacker. I usually have a backpack that is 75% batteries. It's kind of a lot, dude. Uh, camera batteries, drone batteries, V-mount batteries, and USB battery packs. Airport security loves me. Oh, I know. I, I, I always, it's a riot. If I'm going on a, an actual shoot and I've got a bag full of gear, I lay it down on the conveyor, but like, do you have a laptop in there? I'm like, yeah, you're going to need to go through this one. It goes through and they always look at me like, what the, just to bring it here. It's amusing. Uh, Jordan Boyd is saying, don't forget, hey, hello, Jordan, don't forget silicon packets. Oh, very good tip. Throw a few in your camera bag to soak up any moisture. Dropped my phone in a river this week, and those things are lifesavers. Very, very good advice. Another thing is just to get a waterproof iPhone. I can't, you know, this is the 7, 7 Plus. Uh, now it's water, waterproof, whatever, IP, yada, yada, who cares? It's, you could put this thing underwater. It's like such a, a relief to not have to worry about water on my phone. I can't even tell you. In the kitchen, I'm using it. I don't worry if I get dirty. If I got my hands are covered in food, I can just pick up my phone. I don't care. I know I can put it under the sink and wash it off later. It's just, it's a remarkable, remarkable thing. It seems like a little detail, but my God, once you have a waterproof phone, it just changes everything. It really does. So anyway, and that's obviously, that's a huge thing you need for travel. You got to have your phone. You got to have uh, your charger for that. And actually I brought this out just so I could remind you about this thing. This, I did this a little review on this thing a while ago. Um, we'll link to that up here. This is my neck tech charger. This is for the or extra battery, it's not charger, extra battery power for the iPhone 7 Plus. They make a smaller one for the 7. It's huge, right? When you put this thing in here, it does make for a very large and heavy phone, but this will charge my phone, I think about one and a half times. So I get a really good long day out of this thing if I need it. And um, I, I, I'm loving it. Yes, it's huge, but I really am enjoying this. So a little extra review on that thing. It's, it's, working out nicely. Okay, so we talked about batteries. Don't forget them. Have lots of them. Now let's talk about the actual gear. What do you need? So the amount of gear that Imad is bringing is going to require a considerable bag. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go out shooting with all that gear. This is one of those things about travel. Right? You've got your, um, uh, you've got your, your A to B bag, if you will, uh, getting from home to your destination. And then you've got your around B bag. You don't have to have the same bag, right? So if I grab, so I grabbed a couple of bags here. This is a relatively small one, but say a bag like this, I can fit an immense amount of gear into this thing. This is a think tank. What's this thing? I love this bag. Um, the shape shifter. This is an older bag. I've had it for years. I'm, I hope it's still available. Uh, really, really nice camera bag. It holds a ton of gear. The, my one thing that I initially didn't like about this is it's, I, when I first got this, I was still shooting Canon and I could not put a body with a lens on it in here. You had to take everything apart because of the way the pockets are. It's not designed for uh, getting into the bag while you're shooting. See, it's all these like little vertical pockets. But now with the Lumix gear, it's so much smaller, I actually can put a camera with a lens on it in there. So it's become even more useful to me, but I love this bag. But this is not a bag you may want to carry around all day, right? Especially you got this thing packed full of Two bodies, a backup point and shoot, and one, two, three, four, five, six, what? One, two, three, four, five lenses and two fly. No, you don't, that's too much. You don't want to carry that around all day. But you can carry all your gear to your destination in a big bag and then have a smaller bag for while you're there for while you're walking around. What am I doing today? What do I really need? Do I really need that 70 to 300 today? Probably not. Uh, do I really need the fisheye today? Maybe not. Of course, if you're the kind of photographer who just wants to have all your gear with you at all times, then that's what you're gonna do, right? I'm not gonna be able to talk you out of that, but I encourage you, heavily encourage you, to limit what you bring and even limit what you bring on the trip. 
He's going to India for months. I get it. This is probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. Maybe never going back. You want to bring everything you have. I totally, totally get that. In his case, I probably would go ahead and bring all that. I probably would bring that much stuff if I was going, but I would not be carrying it all around with me every day. Uh, I would be carrying things around in a small bag. So I'm going to go through my kind of ideal travel stuff here in a moment, but I'm going to start with this. This is all packed up, and I think you're going to be really surprised at what's in here. This is, uh, this is an Ona bag, O-N-A. I've talked about these guys before. They're ridiculously overpriced bags, but they're kind of pretty. Uh, the only reason I own this is because I bought it for a shoot when I was on camera and I wanted to have a really cool, trendy bag on camera. That's the only reason I ever spent the money on this, but I do love them. It's, it's just, it's, they're really nice. They're really nice. If you can afford it and you don't mind spending stupid money on a bag, uh, they're gorgeous. Anyway, so this, I forget what model this is. Does it have a model on it? Probably not. Anyway, whatever. It's a, it's a little Ona bag. To give you an idea of the size, other than the fact that I'm holding it in my hands, this is an iPad mini. The mini fits in here. The 10 inch size does not. So here's, do this without screwing up my camera here. Um, this is an older one, so the newer ones are a little bit thinner. But if, I mean, I can, I can physically force this in there, but it sticks out like that and you look like an idiot. So that's probably not ideal, you know, in a pinch, sure, but this bag is not really designed to carry a big iPad. It will, however, perfectly carry the mini if you're good with that. So that's cool. Uh, obviously not going to carry your laptop in this thing. So there's my iPad in here. This is, I would consider this to be a really robust travel kit what's in here right now. This is more your filmmaker's travel kit. I'm going to go out and I'm going to shoot a movie run and gun on my own. I've got in here, you're going to be surprised, I'm telling you, my microphone, the 35 to 100 2 8, and the GH5 with the 12 to 35. This right here comprises everything you need for filmmaking on the road, right? <clears throat> oh, and batteries. I even got a couple extra batteries in here. And this would be in there. I've taken docs I don't want to forget, but there's my extra memory cards, right? So that's that's everything that I would need for a filmmaking stint, going out and shooting. Isn't that, like, that's amazing that it can fit all this in this tiny little bag. And keep in mind that when you're actually out shooting, odds are this is in your hand. It better be in your hand. Don't leave your camera in your bag when you're shooting. You can't shoot when it's in your, in your bag. Which means I could actually free this up to have another lens in there. So if I wanted to have, like, my Noctocron with me and do this and have this on my shoulder, Boom. Or just don't weigh yourself down. Remember that you're traveling, you're trying to be lightweight and nimble, and don't uh, don't carry extra stuff if you don't need it. Leave the hole in the bag so when you go into a restaurant, if you want to put it away, keep it out of sight, you can stuff it in there, close it up. People think it's your wife's purse, right? It's great. So, uh, and I only say that because I know my audience is like 98% men. She leads like the token woman here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, bring some friends, please. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous how male-centric my audience is. Anyway, so there's that. This is, this is really a great setup, but this is big boy video shooting setups. So we don't want this. I don't want to do all that, right? I don't want that big stuff. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of the big stuff. And let's talk about a truly small, lightweight, travel, nimble photography kit. So let's see, I don't need that. And I will need this. And oops, lens cap's falling off. All right. Not all of this. This is just some sample gear here. I've talked about before many, many times. We're going to link to all this gear down below. So anything I'm talking about today, if you're thinking, ooh, that sounds like fun, um, links down below. Which, by the way, to my UK friends, I finally reached out to Amazon because um, I've been getting, I've been being told repeatedly, hey, you got to have Amazon UK links on here, affiliate links. I was hoping that my US affiliate links would just kind of automatically translate over. I got a response back today. No, you have to apply. I have to apply for an affiliate program in every single Amazon store, of which there's a, a dozen of them or something. Obviously, I'm not going to fill the links down below with a dozen stores, even if I could get into all of them. I will, what I'll probably end up doing is I will apply for them, and I'll just put, if you're shopping in the UK, click here for shopping, and then I'll just take you to the store, and then you can search. But anyway, I digress. Um, so links to all this stuff will be down below. So this is the GX85, which I've no secret, no bones about. I love, love, love this camera. It's a travel camera. Super compact. You can see how small and lightweight this thing is. Beautiful camera. Great image quality. Huge fan of it. Very lightweight, very small. The lens that's on here is one of my favorite lenses, the 15 millimeter f1.7. If I had to take one body, one lens on a trip around the world, it would either be this 
or if I knew I was gonna be shooting video, it'd be this, and I'd probably still put this lens on here. But this is obviously a lot bigger than this. If I wanted primarily still photography or shooting video and not worrying about sound, this thing shoots gorgeous video. All the video shot, no, not all the video, that's not true. A lot of the video shot on my um, Mexico trip, the Oaxaca trip, was shot on this camera. Some was shot on the GH4 as well, didn't have the five yet. Uh, beautiful video. Crappy sound because you've only got the built-in microphone, no audio input. But if you don't care about the sound, if you're really just maybe you're going to capture some natural sound and um, it's more about you're going to mix music to it later, then great. Obviously, you could also record audio separately, but now we're getting into a whole other ballgame, so let's not go there. But you can this, – this little thing right here, if I'm going to go out one body, one lens, this is probably what I'm going to take. Now, if the 15 slash 30 millimeter is too wide for you, then you've got the 50, right? So that's the 51.4 Leica lens, and I've talked a lot about this, the Xiongyi Chinese-made, uh, it's sorry, 25 millimeter, 50 equivalent, the Xiongyi 25 millimeter F0.95 all manual lens. I don't mind it being all manual. Focus peaking is amazing. You put this thing on here, I can shoot wide open, I can focus quickly, uh, but it's not automatic, so something to consider. This is a much heavier lens as well, but this is a really, really nice combination that I am really a big fan of. So. There's that. So that right there, all on its own. Now, if I'm traveling, my trip, let's say this is, sorry, this is me, I'm going on a trip, I am going, I wanna travel around the world as lightweight as possible, get amazing pictures, get great video, not gonna worry about sound so much, I'm not gonna worry about my full on big huge camera gear, I just want lightweight, nimble, super high quality images, I'm going to take the GX85 and the 15, I'm going to take my Xiongyi 25 mil. And because I can't help myself, I'm gonna take the Noctocron. Now, that is clearly as big as the rest of this, but I just, I can't, I can't leave it behind. I can't do it, it's too nice. It's too good of a lens, I can't leave that behind. But if that's out of your price range, and I realize it is for a lot of people, that's a very spendy lens, the 42, where'd it go? The 42.5 millimeter F1.7, so same. We talked about this in the, we did a big roundup of lenses. We'll link to that here. Did a big roundup of lenses, uh, so I'm not gonna go into all that again. But this is obviously not as sharp, not as fast, not as capable, but it is a very good lens and it is way, way smaller. So if you want that longer reach, or you even want a longer reach zoom, that's the cheap 35 to 100 F4 to 5.6 zoom. So now you've got a really tiny pack. And now this, I mean, geez, look, it's like, I could, put this in here, put this in here. I could put a bottle of water in here. I could put um, my lunch in here. I could put uh, some shopping. I mean, this is, it's, this is, there's nothing in here yet. And this is a tiny little bag. So that type of a setup right there, that's ideal. This is what I want to carry. I want to carry a camera that's super tiny and lightweight and a couple of lenses. Again, for me, honestly, it's going to be like this. That's, this is going to be my setup. I'll do this, probably stick that in the corner. See, it only has one divider in it. It's a little annoying, but you could always add one uh, or just jam it in there. Don't worry about it. And that's that's going to be my setup. Let's not forget the batteries. Let's get my batteries in there. A couple of uh, these guys, my memory cards. And I'll put my iPad mini on the back because I want to edit on a big device bigger than my iPhone. It's, I probably wouldn't really. I'd probably just do it on my iPhone. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could do that. If you get a little iPhone, you want to have a bigger screen, the iPad mini will fit in there. And that's it. That's great. If I had a scale, I'd weigh this whole thing, but I don't. Um, that's a great combination, right? That's a really, really, really nice travel pack there. I would go anywhere in the world with this. <sighs> tripod, let's talk tripods. Let's uh, let's talk tripods in a minute. Let me, before we get into that, let's go get my thing back up. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Um, oh, Imad, you are here in the chat. That is awesome. Thank you for tuning in. How perfect. I didn't even get to link to you to let you know that I was doing this, so I'm glad that you're here. Uh, Big Jake, how about a bitchin' photog fanny pack? Yeah, no, no fanny packs. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, it's up to you, man. If you like fanny packs, you go for it. Uh, no thanks. Uh, oh, Scorg has been saying the 10.5 is a little bit taller than the 9.7. Okay, so the new 10.5, I guess, would not fit into this. That's that's good to know. Uh, Sheila's talking about loving the Peak Design stuff. Actually, did I? Oh, no, I was going to bring it. I have a Peak Design bag. Love that bag. Very, very nice. If you need to carry your laptop with you, uh, the the... Peak bag is great for that. You carry a laptop and a bunch of gear, but you're just going to get heavy. You know, you're now t packing a lot of gear in there. But again, do you have to carry your laptop with you when you're out and about shooting? Probably not. You probably leave it at the hotel. Lock it up. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Bart says, when I go on a shoot, I look like I'm about to start a military incursion into a small country, all Pelican cases. Oh, I get it. I get it. Pelicans are awesome. But a Pelican is not what you want to carry around the streets with you, right? That's your A to B bag. That's getting from home to your destination. 
Uh, Bart says, the metal sound of putting Noctocron down is very satisfying. I know, right? The metal lens shade on this thing. It's, it's like, I don't, it's the only, I think it's the only one that's metal. I think it is. I know, isn't that a nice sound? It's great, I love it. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, Imad. Yes, Imad. That's there. You go. Um, this whole show is all about you. Now I see your comment. I'm a Micro Four Thirds user. You repeated what we put in the comment. This is all for you, man. This show is all about you. Emacs Tube. What about your red strap? Oh, you're asking about that. I did a. When did we do this? That was yesterday, Ryan. We put it in the in the Q and A thing. Um, oh, it's in here. It was in the commentary of, I think, yesterday's shows. Ryan's going to confirm that for me in just a moment. But this red strap is from Lance Camera Straps. I talked extensively about it two days ago. We'll, we'll link to it up here. We'll put a link to it. But uh, in the commentary section of one of the shows, I talked extensively about this strap. It's from a company called Lance Camera Straps. Look them up. It's all custom. They're super nice. I really like the straps. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, let's see here. Anything else here? Good. All right. Let's, uh, let's see here. What do I want to say? Hey, we're talking travel. Oops. Let's... Unlock this laptop. Yeah, see, Imad, look. See, this comment, this whole show is all about you. There's your comment, buddy. Um, okay, let's go back to this. And, oops, and, and let's do this. Since we love travel, you love travel, come with me, baby. Come with me to Mexico. I'm going to Oaxaca. Go to photojoseph.com slash workshops. Myself and my buddy Eric Mindling are doing this insanely awesome tour in Oaxaca, Mexico. It is a cultural tourism slash photography workshop. It is all about shooting in these beautiful, beautiful locations. We're going to be seeing incredible things, being in people's homes, eating in amazing restaurants. Here's the web page. The full information is on here. There's a video that shows you what we did last time. Here, let's just take a quick look. I'm just going to randomly jump ahead to a little piece. Look at that food. This is in the back of somebody's home. Private meal in somebody's home. Okay, seriously, you want to do that. Don't you want to come on that? That's going to be so much fun. So we got that. There's all this information about what we're doing, a full breakdown. There's some pictures from the last workshop. These are some of my pictures and some of Eric's pictures. They're all in here. Look at her. She's she adorable. This is, uh, this is all real people that we will see. Well, maybe not the same people, but some of these people, we're probably going to go into their homes. We might see her again. Uh, we're definitely going to see her again. And yeah, and then here's the full itinerary. It's all here. And there's the pricing. It is, uh, ooh, I guess I gotta cross that out. We're past May 31st. So we're up to this price here. 37.45 before the end of this month. You got it, you got it. You gotta sign up though, like before the end of this month. That's only 14 days away to get the second tier discount. Come with us. It's in October. What was it? October, uh, what did I say? 14th, uh, no, 16th to 24th. October 16th to 24th of this year. Sign up. We got space. You wanna come with us. You know you do. It's gonna be so much fun. And then I'll let you play with my. My Noctocron, if you do. How's that for an incentive? Okay, uh, let's see here. Piers is asking, slightly off topic, that's okay, because this is relevant, but a quick thumbs up or thumbs down for Voigtlanders. I have never used one, but as I understand it, they're very good, right? That's, as I, as I understand, those are very good lenses. I just have never personally used one. So I'm gonna give them a thumbs up on reputation, but uh, I, can't, I can't speak personally from it. So there you go. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Ryan's confirming it was from Tuesdays. We're talking about the red strap was Tuesdays. Okay, we'll link to that up here. All right, tripods. Do you need a tripod when you travel? That's a tough question, isn't it? It really depends on the kind of photography that you do. If you're doing HDR, if you're if you're Trey Ratcliffe and you're shooting HDR, then obviously you need a tripod. There's just no two ways about it. If you do really low light photography, night photography, you're gonna want a tripod. If you don't, then I'm gonna argue that you probably don't need a tripod. Keep in mind that, especially modern cameras, if you've got a newer camera, built-in stabilization is so good that even for a fairly long night photo, I'm not talking minutes, but you know, half a second long photo, if you can get yourself really stable, you can probably get that picture okay. Plus remember that you don't have to have a tripod to keep your camera steady, right? There are a million things that you can use to stabilize your camera, including the bag itself. Right, so let's just say that I'm out and about and I need to set my camera on something. Well, I can, I can, you know, I can do this. And you go, okay, well, it's not at the right angle. Well, you know, you prop it up, you get creative, you make it work. And here's one of the things I like to point out. Let's just say that that's the best I can get the camera, right? Actually, it looks pretty level. Let's, let's hear us do it like this. Let's just say that that's the best I can do the camera. It's obviously at an angle, <laughs> jaunty angle. That's no good. Um, I want a straight horizon line. 
fix it in post, man. You can always rotate that horizon line in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever you're using. You can fix it. It's more important to have the camera stable. So if your stable surface is at an angle, the hood of a car, great example, right? The hood of a car, you set it on there, perfectly stable, not going anywhere. Make sure there's nobody about to drive off. You put it on the hood of the car and it's at an angle, but it's solid. You put the self timer on, you push the button, you stand away, let it finish rocking, it settles out takes the picture, five second long exposure, 10 second exposure, perfect, perfectly solid. You obviously couldn't do that handheld, but it's crooked, so what? You can fix it in software. So don't forget that, very important thing to remember. You can stabilize in just about anything. In fact, in my, um, in my low light, this is a good, good other pitch here, in my low light photography piece, uh, a course rather, that I did on Linda, I have a whole section in here about stabilizing your camera, using alternative things to stabilize your camera. So we talk about all kinds of stuff you can use, all kinds of different creative ways to stabilize your camera because at the end of the day, if you're gonna do a long exposure, you gotta have it stabilized. But maybe you don't wanna carry a tripod with you. So, but let's just say you do wanna carry a tripod. You've decided that you have to have a tripod. What are you gonna carry? So I've talked tripods a bit before. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a big thing on this. We'll link, if we don't already, I'll make a playlist and we'll link to a playlist on tripods up here. Ryan, write that down. We're gonna link to a playlist on here on tripods. And this is the Mi Photo I, I really like this guy. I bought this thing on a Total Lark. It was at a trade show. I think they were selling them for cheap so they could get the stock off the floor. They didn't have to carry them home. And I bought one and it's great. It's solid, it's lightweight. Um, it's got this nice feature here. A lot of tripods have this, but it has a hook on the bottom. So the legs fold out this way, right? It's got a hook on the bottom so you can hang your bag on there. That's not just out of convenience. That is to weigh the tripod down so that it's heavier and more solid. So if you're in a slightly windy situation, you're getting a little rocket on there, hang your camera bag off of that and away you go. Nice ball head, uh, Arca Swiss plate on it. It's just, it's really, it's nicely designed, it's metal. It's fairly lightweight. This is a great little travel tripod. If you gotta have a tripod with you, this is a great way to go. This is my iPhone thing, adapter. That's what that is. Um, get in there. So, and incidentally, ooh, so if you're looking at this thinking, what the heck is that? This is a shoulder pod. It took me a while to figure out why they called it a shoulder pod. I think it's because this is like a, it's like an upside down shoulder. I don't know. I honestly have no idea. But the, this thing holds your iPhone probably without this big case in here. Um, it you loosen this to make it bigger, taller. But this little thing on here, this is a cold shoe that is attached to this so that I can do this. So if I if I'm doing something with my iPhone, I can do get this on there, get that on there. The iPhone goes into there. Obviously, I got to cable this in. But now I've got a thing with. It would be this way, there we go. Whew. Whatever, I put this, in. anyway, you get the idea. But that's a DIY. Um, this is something that I put together. It was actually uh, Julio Shorio, who's a fellow Lumix Luminary. He's the one who first came up with this. I uh, blatantly ripped him off with this permission and did a tip on that. Look at all the stuff I'm getting to promote today. This is a good day. And in my DIY photographer course on lynda.com also, so photojoseph.com slash DIY will take you there. If you're not already a member, go to photojoseph.com slash lynda for a 10 day free trial. You can uh, learn all kinds of fun DIY stuff, and one of those is building this, how to take this apart and attach a cold shoe to it. That's kind of cool. It's a fun little thing. Anyway, sorry, I'm just totally off topic there. But hey, if you're traveling and you want to take a do video from your iPhone with the sound and you want to have a tripod for it, pretty good way to do it. Anyway, so a little tripod. If you need a tripod, that's a really good option. If you're shooting video and you want to travel video tripod, I don't have it in here with me, but um, again, that link that I already pointed to with the playlist, I did a review on a uh, Manfrotto B Free tripod is what it was called, the B Free, and it was a little travel video tripod with a video head. I really like that tripod as well. I think I think I like this one better. It's a tough call, but I think I like this one better, but uh, this doesn't have the video head. Now, apparently you can get a video head on the Mi Photos. I'm gonna have to look at Mi Photo tripods again, see what's new and, and hot on the market because I haven't looked at them in a while. But uh, if you're if you're interested in tripods, look at the Mi Photos, look at the Manfrotto B Free series, both very, very good. Okay. <sighs> uh, let's see, uh, let's just comment, let me scroll look up and let's see what comments are in here. Um, let's see, is that on topic? Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah, sure, that's just all on topic, why not? Let's do it. All right. Abhishek Shah says, why are the Panasonic lenses rated so low on DxO Mark? I was looking at the ratings of the best Panasonic lens, the Panasonic 42 and it's rated 796th in terms of sharpness. That makes no sense at all. It's one of the sharpest lenses I've ever used. I have no idea. And I'm, I'm friends with the DxO guys, although I have, DxO Mark is a totally separate thing from the DxO that I've worked with, but uh, I have no idea, not a clue. I, whatever they're saying, the thing is sharp as hell, so 
I don't know, maybe they had a fingerprint on the lens when they tested it. Sheila says, does the equipment go through x-ray at the airport? Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. You can put your camera gear through the x-rays at the airport, no problem at all, you have to. You, you don't have a choice in the matter. Uh, batteries, they may want to take out an x-ray separately. If you got a ton of them, I think Bart was talking about having just 75% batteries and that could be a problem. A problem. It's just something to be aware of. They might want to have a closer look. Generally what happens is, here, here's my routine, right? Let's say I got a big camera bag, backpack, full of gear. I lay it down on the conveyor belt. The guy says, do you have a laptop in there? Please take it out. Dude, take out the laptop, take out the iPad, take out the iPhone, put it all in a separate thing. And he kind of looks at me and goes, Right, and just put it through. And I go, it's full of, he goes, put it through. So it goes through, and then they go, why'd you put that through? <laughs> Check. And so then they go and they do the swab thing. And they might actually have me take everything out. I've had that in some airports. They want everything taken, that's a pain in the ass. They want everything taken out. And then they go, okay, put it back in. You're like, gee, thanks, I got a flight in five minutes. Um, get to the airport early if you're traveling with a huge amount of gear. So uh, that happens sometimes. Mostly what happens is after it goes through the first pass and they realize they can't possibly see everything, they might want to rotate the bag on its side, send it through again, at which point they realize they still can't see everything. And then they go, all right, bomb sniff. And so then they take the little swab and they wipe it all over everything and um, put it into the bomb sniffer and off you go. So that's, that's happened to me a lot. I would say that's the most common occurrence when I've got a huge bag full of gear. They do the little swab test and off you go. Uh, you know, it takes a few extra minutes of security. It really helps to have, uh, what's, the, what's the travel thing? What am I, a uh, trusted traveler? That helps a lot because the lines are less long to begin with. You generally don't have to take your laptop out, even though I still do when I have all this stuff. And uh, it just, it's just easier. They just, you know, you're already on the clear list. So they tend to be a little bit less paranoid about you. So uh, yeah, trusted traveler, if you can do it, super, super convenient. But yeah, your stuff goes through, it's no problem. It's not like film, you know, film days, we had to worry about sending high ISO film through the x-ray machines and not screwing it up. You don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, um, Jordan says, maybe off topic, but do you have any experience with the Leica SL Type 601? I don't know what that is. So no, I don't have any experience with it, sorry. Pierre says, after much research, I found this to be the best travel tripod. Not cheap, but worth you reaching out to them. Three-legged thing, oh, those guys are cool. Albert Carbon Fiber Tripod System with Airhead 360. Good Lord. All right, let me look that thing up. Um, I've never used a three-legged thing. I know that they've got a great reputation, very good reputation. So is it so number three, three-legged thing? Oh boy, Albert Carbon Fiber Fiber Tripod System 360. I typed, mistyped half of that, but Google is gonna find it anyway because Google's awesome. Three-legged Equinox Albert carbon fiber tripod system. All right, here we go, three-legged thing. And, not oh, waiting for Google to load now. Bum -ba -da -ba -ba. come on. There we go, three-legged thing. Oh, that's interesting. It's, it looks very much like the man, the me photo. Uh, wow, that is like a robust looking, does this zoom in? No. Cool, okay, nice, lays flat, that's awesome. Inverts, love it when you can invert the tripod head. Sorry, a tripod column. Converts to a monopod, that's kind of cool. Neat, compact, cool colors. Looks like it's all metal construction. Very nice, okay, you can swap out the bolt and the head. Wow, got a leveling spirit level. Very, very nice. Ooh, I likey, I likey. All right, how, oops, oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's not what I wanted, escape. How much is this thing? This is 400 pounds, I'm on a UK site, so uh, whatever that is to American pesos and the three-legged thing, very nice. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. I, like I said, I've, I've, I know they have a great reputation. I don't own any of the gear, I've never used it, but that looks like a very nice tripod. Definitely a little bit more expensive, as, uh, as Piers pointed out, but super good recommendation. All right, we'll link to that below as well. Um, Ryan, find that thing on B&H, please, and we'll, uh, we'll stick that in the comments down below. Um, Bart says, have you ever checked gear and used a homemade media badge to get a discounted rate? <laughs> no. Some airlines will accept any pass, even ones you make yourself, that has your photo and says media. That's hysterical. No, I never have. That is very funny. Um, I love it. Uh, Imad, a request, is my gear enough? Imad, I'm going to make you go back, to go back and watch the rest of the show. We've, we've talked about your gear extensively, so you're going to have to watch it from the beginning. Silly says, Tony and Chelsea said it was the worst tripod system they ever used. No, really? Come on. Seriously? That's hardcore. That's a little harsh. Oh, well. See, Trevor says three-legged makes a nice product. I don't know. I don't know Tony and Chelsea personally, so I have no idea. 
Uh, I, I can't say anything about it. I just, I'm surprised to hear that because I've, I've certainly heard good things. I guess that means I need to get one and do a review. I will ask, after I return the, uh, the big Manfrotto with the video head that I've got, I will ask for one of those next from, uh, from B&H, assuming that B&H carries it. I'm sure they do. Scorgasm says, any thoughts on iFootage's new Cobra 2 strike telescopic monopod? No, I don't, never, no, never looked at it, never seen it, don't know anything about it. Okay, I think that's it. I don't think we're going to go into a separate commentary in here because we've like really covered things here today. Um, I think we're good. We're not going to do a separate commentary today. This is good. This has been fun. Travel photography is so much fun. Just don't forget. Don't, let's just have a little, let's have a little heart to heart here. Don't forget why you're traveling. You're traveling to have an experience, to meet new people, eat wonderful food, and yes, create amazing images. Don't weigh yourself down with so much gear that you're going, well, should I use the 35 to 100? It would be better if I shot, brought out the 42 millimeter lens. Should I use a tripod? Maybe I should put it, just take the damn picture. Don't, don't weigh yourself down with too much gear, get, getting caught up in this moment of indecision and losing the opportunity. If you have less gear with you, you have fewer decisions to make. Right? If all I've got is this, I don't have to decide what lens to put on, do I? It's already on there. And if I can't get the shot with it, just remember it up here. You know, it's it's not a commercial shoot. If you're on a commercial shoot, then you got to carry every piece of gear you own and then rent twice as much as well because that's what you're getting paid to do. But if you're traveling for personal stuff, just enjoy your trip. Make great images with whatever you have. If you want to go out for dinner and just take your iPhone, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up for it. Over it. You can get great pictures with your iPhone. No, they're not going to be as good as what you get with your camera, but they're still going to be great pictures, right? They're still good pictures, and you can still remember the memory, capture the memory. If you're traveling with your family, don't be that guy or mom who's out there with their camera all the time with 200 pounds of gear going, hold on, kids. Parents got to get a shot. Like, seriously, come on. Just don't forget you're on vacation with your family. When I travel with my family, I tend to go very, very light. I will probably just carry this and treat it more like a snapshot type thing. I'm not trying to be on a commercial shoot. I'm not trying to be on a true travel trip, a true travel photography thing when I'm with my family. It's just, it takes too much of the fun away from them. Uh, you know, use your skills as a photographer to document your trip, to capture great moments of your family. Occasionally get some really cool, awesome photo. If you really, really want to go out shooting, maybe say, hey folks, hey guys, hey family, can I go out for a little bit this morning? I'm going to go out really early. I'm going to go out at sunrise. Don't worry. Kids, you're all going to be sleeping in anyway. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Just keep in mind the people around you. Don't, don't, don't make it all about photography. Uh, Martin says, can you recommend some LED lighting for travel? Ooh. Hmm. I, I'm a fan of the Felix lights which of course aren't cheap, but they're very, very good quality. The P100 is the probably the smallest, I think it is the smallest light, battery powered light. Uh, there's definitely smaller ones than that, but I, do you need battery powered? You know, it, that's a big question. If you're using LED, that's not really a strobe situation. Are you, are you gonna be powering them in a room? Are you doing interviews while you're on the road and you wanna do video that way? Um, are you talking about an on-camera LED, which I think are horrific? Have, putting a, a light on top of your camera, it just makes all the shadows move when you move. It's generally a really bad idea. Uh, so it means you have to have it off camera somewhere, which means it's probably on a stand, which means you could probably plug it into a wall. Um, yeah, I, if I travel, if I'm traveling with my LED kit, I have a big Felix kit that will go in a roller bag, but then that's because I'm shooting interviews or something like that where I need the LED lighting kit and I don't have to worry about battery power. So as far as small, portable, battery-powered LEDs, I really don't have any recommendations. There's so many of them out there now. And, if, you know, even things like the LumaCube, those tiny, tiny little things are apparently super, super bright. I know people are big fans of those, a couple of those in your bag, and you can kick some light into corners. So that might be something to worth, worth looking at that's not going to weigh you down. Uh, yeah, look at those. Look at the Luma Cubes. Those are kind of cool. Bart, Bart Johnson says, I went to Mexico and left the cinema cameras, GH5, and drones at home. All I brought was a GoPro for me and a GoPro for my wife. I actually had a real vacation. See, there you go. Sometimes it's just what you got to do. It's what you got to do. Um, uh, Martin saying, ideally, a battery and mains on a cheap tripod. Talking about the light. So battery and... Yeah, you have to do a little more research. Sorry, the Felix ones I really like. You can get battery packs for the Felix, but now you're talking about a big light with a big battery pack. And by big light, I mean, you know, some of them are the size of this lens, and then you can put your um, barn doors on it. Uh, it's got a cage, not a cage, but it's got, you know, mounting things. You can tilt it. It's got, it's full on light, and it's a high-end pro light, but um, it's sizey. You know, it's, it takes up space. So it depends on what you're doing if you really want to do that. Okay. Uh, Trevor says, Aperture, make, ap that's again, A-P-U-T-U-R-E, Aperture makes a credit card sized LED. Forget the name. Cool. Check those. Yeah, those guys are doing some really interesting stuff, aren't they? 
I gotta, I gotta do more with them. I've never really played with any of their gear. I know that um, that uh, Max Yurdev does a lot with Aperture stuff. I think he's, I don't know if he's sponsored by them or if he's just a fan or what, I'm not quite sure, but check out his channel. He's, uh, he's definitely talked about a lot of Aperture lights in the past. Uh, Joshua says, forget tripods, just purchase a bunch of drones to hold your gear. Good plan, good plan. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap this up. Remember, I am technically kind of off part of next week, Monday through Wednesday, because we got friends in town, but I am gonna do an impromptu live when I get my new little drone, the little spark. When that comes, I'll do an unboxing and we'll have some fun with it. I don't know, I can't promise timing, so just watch your notifications. Make sure, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe, do it right now. Hey, thumbs up, by the way, all the way. Just, just everybody watching right now, just. Go down, hit the thumbs up. I'm going to watch and see if the numbers go up. I can't even see the numbers here. Anyway, please do that. Hit the thumbs up thing. Uh, and uh, uh, and then when you subscribe to the channel, click the little bell, the little notification thing, and then you'll get alerted when I do have a live show. When I go live, it'll say, that idiot's live again. And you'll go, here he goes again. And then you'll get to see me crash my drone into the garage door. All right, that's it, folks. I'm out of here. Have yourselves a great weekend. Enjoy the weather. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Have uh, have some good barbecue this weekend or whatever it is you're going to do to celebrate. Hope your kids are nice to you. It's like the one day of the year they have to be nice, right? Talk to you soon. See you next week. Bye-bye.